15. Sometimes people get confused by it, but I feel like the Lord's all over it tonight. I want to read it to us. Now the tax collectors and sinners are all gathering around to hear Jesus. The Pharisees and teachers of the law mutter, this man welcomes the sinners and eats with them. The religious people are mad. It sets the stage and Jesus pipes up. He told them this parable. He says, suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country? and go after the lost sheep until he finds it. And after he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and he goes home. He calls his friends, he calls his neighbors together and says, rejoice with me because I've found my lost sheep. And I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who don't. <laughs> that good. I want to just read a couple thoughts, just share a little bit of the story behind the song, and then we'll sing that bridge one more time and we'll go nuts. We'll see what happens. So when I use the, re the phrase, the reckless love of God, when we say it, we're not saying that God himself is reckless. He's not crazy. We are, however, saying that the way he loves is in many regards quite so. But what I mean is this. He's utterly unconcerned with the consequences of his actions with regard to his own safety, comfort, and well-being. His love isn't crafty or slick. It's not cunning or shrewd. In fact, all things considered, it's quite childlike. And might I even suggest sometimes downright ridiculous. His love bankrupted heaven for you, for me. His love doesn't consider himself first. It isn't selfish or self-serving. He doesn't wonder what he'll gain or lose by putting himself on the line. He simply puts himself out there on the off chance that you and I might look back at him and give him that love in return. His love leaves the 99 to find the one every time. And to many practical adults, that's a foolish concept. But what if he loses the 99 and finding the one, right? What if? Finding that one lost sheep is and will always be supremely important. His love isn't cautious. It's a love that sent his own son to die a gruesome death on a cross. There's no plan B with the love of God. He gives his heart so completely, so preposterously, that if refused, we would think it irreparably broken. Yet he gives himself away again and again and again and again, time and time again. Make no mistake, our sins do pain his heart, and 70 times 7 is a lot of times to get your heart broken. And yet he opens up and allows us back in every single time. His love saw you when you hated him, and all logic said they'll reject me. He said, no, I don't care what it costs me. I lay my life on the line as long as I get their hearts. To make it personal, his love saw me, a broken down kid with regret as deep as the ocean. My innocence and youth poured out like water. And he found me and he put me on his shoulders. And he carried me on. Because he's just that good, he's just that kind. He's a father that never gives up. So as we sing this bridge and chorus one more time, just let it, let it break down those walls tonight. There's no shadow. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after you. Yeah. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after you. Yeah, again. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after you. He's breaking off self-hatred tonight. There's no wall you won't kick down. I won't tear down, coming at you. There's no shadow now. There's no shadow you won't light up. Bouncing you won't Come on, let it rise. There's no shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up, coming at you. 
Come on with the grace. Alright, so, uh, Daniel, let's talk about, uh, salvation by grace. I want to talk about, uh, what is grace, the different types of grace. I want to talk about uh, being thankful of God's grace. Man. Talk about uh, what having grace looks like to others. I want to talk about uh, accepting God's grace for our own shortcomings. Amen. Amen. Uh, we'll start off in uh, Titus 2, 11 through 14. Can for the Titus remarkable, Titus. undeserved grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. It teaches us to reject ungodliness and worldly and moral desires and to live sensible, upright, and godly lives with a purpose that reflects spiritual maturity in this present age, awaiting and confidently expecting fulfillment of our blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, Amen. who willingly gave himself to be crucified on our behalf to redeem us and purchase our freedom from all wickedness and to purify for himself the chosen and very special people to be his own possession. We are enthusiastic for doing what is good. Amen. Amen. The actual de dictionary definition of grace is the freely given, undeserved favor and love of God. You can't pay for it or earn it. That's right. <laughs> so when I was doing this study, there's actually six different types. There's a lot more, but we're going to go over six different types of grace. First, we're going to start off with uh, the, get the grace of forgiveness. All of us through our life have, have, you know, not lived the most upright lives. I know for me, I lived a life of sin. That's all I knew. You know, I didn't, I didn't know how to, how to do things the right way. I was uh, degenerate, as I told somebody the other day before coming to Christ. <laughs> but, you know, that is what Jesus come to this world for, is to save the sinners, to forgive us That's right. of all of our sins. All of them. All our sins are our past, our sins daily. All the sins that we're ever going to do, we're forgiven for. But not only does He forgive us, He also gives us the grace of acceptance. Amen. You know, I mean, he, he He allows us to come into agreement with a father-son relationship. We can come to Him with all of our problems. That's right. All of our, you know, anything we go through throughout the day, we we have Him to commune with. It's not like we have to go sacrifice lambs on a hill, Come on. you know, to be forgiven for our sins. We, we can talk to him yeah. anytime we want, all day. And we'll go with uh, uh, Come on, Wes. Wes. He also gives us the grace of presence. You know what I mean? For, he, he puts himself inside of us. Amen. You know what I mean? It, it allows us to come to him and talk to him. He he walks with us daily. And he don't just, you know, just give us the grace, you know what I mean, and uh, this favor and just leave us at that. You know what I mean? He, he gives us all these things inside of us along with this grace. It's not just, uh, all right, I, I, I love you and go on and, you know, <laughs> Live how you're going to live. No, he, <laughs> he walks with us daily. This this is one of, probably one of my favorite ones. He gives us the grace of enablement. Enablement. He gives enablement. Yeah, the the power to stand up here and talk to a bunch of guys. You know, what I mean, while you're nervous Amen. and, and why you you know, he gives you the, the power to 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 teach a class. You know, what I mean, he gives you that, that you have no experience or uh, aren't prepared or or, or anything. He gives you, you know, the grace. Come on, grace and power. You know what I mean to, That's to right. show the love of Christ That's every right. day. Come on with it. Uh, now I had something happen, you know, last week, man. It stood on my heart so heavy. You know, when I first come into Christ, it was it was mainly because of this one guy that I worked with. You know what I mean? He was he was so on fire for Jesus, and I just like, man, I don't know what that dude, I don't know what that dude's got, man. But but you know, it's there's something to it. I want that. I want that. So that happened to me last week. I was down there, I was working in Ufala, and uh, we had this inspector that, he, he's been hard on us, you know, he's been, he, he has not made it easy on us, <laughs> <laughs> and it's been hot, you know, we've been, uh, it's, it's been rough, and uh, so last week, we were, I was covered in sweat, I was like, I was dripping, breathing out, you know, tubs of Smile. sweat, smiling, yeah. yeah, and he said, man, I don't know, he said, every time I see you, you could be, I'm talking about 
about to die, but you were, you've got a smiley face and you've got a, a, a wonderful attitude. And you're just killing it. And I said, well, let me go ahead and tell you. <laughs> so, <laughs> I have not always been this guy. You know, uh, before, before I found God, I was a straight degenerate. Uh, and if I come to work in a bad attitude, everybody at the job site was going to be in a bad attitude. <laughs> you know, he's like, I, misery loves company. But now, you know, I'm so thankful to be here. That's right. You know what I mean? And Amen. There's, there's nothing that's going to bring my mood down. And that is, Amen. it's not, it's not by my power. That's you know, right. I know what oh the God. old me, uh, how he would handle the heat and how he would handle if something didn't go my way or, Come on. or anything like that. I would be a real knucklehead. We'll, we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> oh, we know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, another one of God's graces is the grace of freedom. The, the grace to get rid of all the addictions that we've had our entire life. Right. Like, I had done come into agreement that I was going to be an addict my whole life. Like, I used to tell myself, well, as long as I can keep my job, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's not that bad, you know? Like, who cares if I get high? Who am I hurting? But, uh, <laughs> man, it was so stupid. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I was stupid. stupid. Like, really. Oh. <laughs> uh, whew. Takes a lot of grace to get up there and admit that too. Yeah, for sure. yeah, yeah. You know, as men, yeah. Super stupid. <laughs> <laughs> double, <laughs> double, <laughs> double down, stupid <laughs> boy. Woo! Good lord, man! Ain't got nothing. <laughs> and the last one is uh grace of completion. You know what I mean? Like uh knowing that he didn't just start a start this sentence, you know, just to, to leave us. Like uh first Philippians one six says I am convinced and confident of this very thing that he who has began a good work in me right. will continue Amen. to perfect and complete to, uh, perfect and complete until the day that Christ comes back to us. First um, Philippians one six. And I don't see no turning back. You know, I, right. I don't see, like, there's nothing in this world, I don't care what trials, tribulations that, that come upon me, I'm not going back to that life. That's right. You know, it, <laughs> like, it's, it's, I am so thankful for the grace that God has given me mm -hmm. and to be able to bestow that upon, you know, other people. <laughs> I've thought about it enough. Amen. All right, uh, so I want to talk about uh, being thankful of God's grace. I want to talk about uh, the story of Saul, you know, his transformation to Paul. Uh, Like this guy was hated Christians. Right, like right. he would he was doing everything in his power to to get decrees where he could go to different he was he was going across state lines, you know, trying right. to trying to just round up these Christians just to just to, yeah. to have them put in and jail. The whole time thought he was right. Yeah, thought it was right because you know I'm not saying he didn't love God. He was he he loved but his his view of love was not the view of love that we go off of. He knew his scripture, you know, it says, you know, that he was one of the best of his, in his class, you know, of, uh, of knowing his scripture, knowing the law, and all this right here, but. Well, how we talking about Saul? Saul yeah, yeah, Saul to Paul, yeah. Yeah. Paul yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Right. He, but he knew nothing of love. Right. You know, and uh, so when he, when he, but, you know, Jesus, he didn't care about none of that. He knew that how bad of a guy he was. He knew that all these things that he had done in his life, uh, and he still says, "Well, no, I, I got a plan for this guy. You know right. what I mean? I'm gonna, I want to show my grace 
to this guy who doesn't deserve it, has done nothing to earn it, you know, but through the grace I give him, you know, the amount of people I can reach mm. by showing that, well. look what I can do. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I, I want to I make this world world renowned known that, you know, I took this guy that, that hated Christians. Right. That was that was trying to put him to death, you know, sir, and, and watched the boy get stoned to death and and washed his hands but didn't even care. Right. But right. I wanna I wanna magnify my glory by showing him the grace that that I can give so he can, you know, write two thirds of the New Testament, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, but it, and Paul does, Paul said that uh he said, I count all them things as lost. Right, right. All that all that School and all that scripture and and that that I spent all them years, you know, digging in. I count all that as lost. That's rubbish. Yeah. Compared to my mission right. today, yeah. and you know, I feel like Amen. that. You know, that's with all of us. You know that I count. It, it's so wild that I don't even remember people's names. Right. That right. I used to associate with. Like, <laughs> I, I I was trying to. Last time I seen this dude in the uh, probation office a couple weeks ago. Like when I was in New Fallen, and I knew the dude, you know, I knew his face, but I could not even think of his name. Like, mm. it's it's just so. Every day is just you know, I can't wait to uh, to see what God's doing every day. You know, it's, it's amazing, man. Right. And I try to, I mean, I try to stay thankful throughout my whole day, and I that's the only, I guess that's the only reason I I stay in such a positive mood is because. I know what I deserve. You know what I mean? I, I know that I should be in prison right now. You know, like or dead. Or dead. You know what I mean? Like that or that didn't even used to scare me, you know, like to to die on a Tuesday was just like yeah. you know what I mean? Like was not like uh I think about it now, I'm like, how many times have you just died on a Tuesday morning, you know what I mean? And like been okay with it and went back the next day and did the, same thing again. Did the same thing again. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and he saved you for he such saved a, such a day as this. Like, for such a day as this. For such a day as this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not not because of anything I did. Not because I was a good dude in the streets. Not because mm-hmm. you know uh, how I was living that I deserved it. Now just because I want to magnify my name through what he can do. Amen. Yeah. That is awesome, man. Wow. What's going to be? Uh, 1, 12 through 6 in the Amplified Version. I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has granted me the need of strength and may be able for this because he considered me faithful and trustworthy, putting me into service for this ministry even though I was formerly a blasphemer of the Lord and a persecutor of his church, and a shameful and outrageous violent aggressor towards believers. Yet I was shown mercy because I acted out of ignorance and unbelief. The grace of our Lord, his amazing unmerited favor and blessing, flowed out in superabundance for me together with the faith and love which are realized in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful and trustworthy statement deserving full acceptance and approval that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners among who I am foremost. Yet for this reason I found mercy, so that in me, as the foremost of sinners, Jesus Christ may demonstrate his perfect patience as an example or pattern for those who would believe in him for eternal life. Amen. So uh, I also want to talk about uh, having grace for others. Okay, that's all right. You know what I mean? Like, uh, This this is a this can be a tricky one, especially with Pat. Yeah, I've I've, I've got I've got one in mind. You know, it's, 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 it ain't Pat, but you thank know, God. Oh, oh. <laughs> I was like, come on, one in the chamber. Nah, I got one because you know. <laughs> <laughs> now having grace, but it's it's showing you know kindness, compassion, and love. Even if Amen. they probably don't appreciate it. Or deserve it. Or deserve it. Or probably will never return the favor to you ever. Well, that's not true. I said probably. Yeah. The, 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 you got to go off that chance. You you're not doing it for them to return the favor. Yeah. But you got to, 
just doing it, not expecting mm -hmm. them to return that favor. Mm -hmm. And you know, I don't know. It's it's nothing but God that allows this mm -hmm. to happen because mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I can think of one in particular <laughs> that that I you know, yeah, so many times. You know what I mean? Like, I know you're about that. reached out on a limb for somebody that I knew I knew what the outcome was going to be. You know, but it's still like something just says in your in your being it says no just show him what the love of God is what's in that money you know what I mean regardless what? again regardless of you know you know if you know the outcome you know it's not really appreciated <laughs> and you you already know that it's probably not going to get returned uh, but that's not why you do it you know we do it to just show God's love Amen. and mercy Amen. you know right. on people that Maybe don't know what that's like. You know. I go to uh yeah. Colossians three. Colossians three thirteen and fourteen in the amplifier. Do you have something, Kevin? Oh yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay. a big thing what you were just talking about, you know, to do something for others and walking on walk with God, you know. Uh, I thank God on that because, you know, a lot of us out there that doesn't know God, man they like want to make themselves look good as far as doing something for another but but then like man, I just did this for you the other day man like I mean what you know I just was doing this and this and, this, and you won't even you won't, you won't do nothing for me you know like I thank God that that me personally I'm sure a lot of us are now you know like to do it for God you know I'm glad that I'm, I'm stepping up and I'm able to do something for another man, a woman, a child. You know, I'm glad that I can, yeah. I can do that now, and not expect nothing in return. And you know I think that's saying? the fruit. I think that's the, the evidence or the fruit of faith. You know, when you, when you, you know, back when you were in your sin and you were all about self and all about what you wanted and what you could get from somebody and to manipulate somebody, and now here you are, you're born again, saved by grace, not of your own. Right? right, and here you are, and now you have fruit. Like Amen. for the first time in your life, you're not taking, but you have something to give Amen. for free. Amen. And I think that's the evidence of your salvation. You know, right? The when it talks about in James, you know, you you show me your faith, I'll show you my works. That's right. I'll show you what I'm doing. Like you will be able to know that I'm in love with the Savior who saved me. Right, and that's the fruit of that. To finally getting your eye off yourself Amen. and to get your eye on what God wants for you. Sure. And that takes a lot of grace, lot of for grace. sure. Thank from God. God. And it has to come from God, right? Yes. Yes, yeah, it has to. No, Got to. <laughs> yeah. Colossians uh, 3, 3, 13, and 14. Bearing graciously with one another, and willingly, willingly forgive each other if one has cause for complaint against each other. <coughs> Just as the Lord has forgiven you, you should forgive. Beyond all those, put on and wrap yourself in love, which is the perfect bond of unity for each one who seeks the best for others. So, there's a there's a story in the Bible. So, Jesus, he he, he heals these ten lepers, and he does it just out of grace, compassion, you know, kindness and love, and only one of these lepers even comes back to right, thank to thank him, to show appreciation or anything. Right. And you know, I'm I'm sure he probably knew what, when he was doing it that they're not going to appreciate it. They're not going to you know uh, return the favor. But regardless, he still you know did it. Did it just and that you know mm. that's how we should live our daily lives. You know, doing things not not for you know to get something out of it or to expect something in return just because that's just what we're called to do. We're, show, we're called to show the love of Christ right. and to be a light in the world. Not expect man to walk. Yeah, that's, right. Right. that's what our call is. This goes a lot quicker. <laughs> All right, so uh, I also want to talk about uh, accepting grace for our own shortcomings. Uh, what? Come on. Yeah. Go to Romans three twenty four. That's a good one.
you know, Clint, as uh, as men, you know, when we have shortcomings or we fall short or we mess something up, we just jack it all the way up, the pride inside us can rise up and, and not want to accept, mm -hmm. you know, the grace, not, not want to accept like what we would call the handout, yeah. you know. And it, it definitely takes a grace, the grace of God for us to be like, you know what, uh, I, I ain't so great that this mess up is like totally uncharacteristic. I'm, I'm a regular guy. And without God, I'd mess up all the time. You know, it, it is a grace to, to accept, you know, the forgiveness. It, it is a grace to, to be able to do that. I, I, I've been, I've been you know, balloon-headed enough at times. In like the past. yesterday. Uh, <laughs> long, long ago, long ago. Yeah. Far, far, far away. Yesterday. Land. Yeah. But I mean, twenty-four it, hours ago. Yeah. Some, sometimes it gets difficult. <laughs> sometimes yeah. it gets difficult to just you know. Woo! To, 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 to let it down and be like, you know yeah. what, I, I, I need this, and then I'll accept this, because I'm, 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 I'm not all that. Well, we are forgiving yeah. what we did in our past, yeah. what we do today, and what we're going to do in the future. Yeah. Amen. Regardless if we forget to fill the drink machine or... Oh, <laughs> <laughs> this is not in your notes. I know that I read them last night. This is not in your notes. Uh, amen. Hey, and I want to point out, too... What we do as men in our pride, when we do something wrong, we get angry at everybody else, and we start blaming everybody else. That's right. That's when we right. could just receive the blood of Jesus. That's right. Amen. I would, man. I would much rather be washing the blood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like you just talked about. You know, you were giving grace to others, and they tie in grace to ourselves and grace to others because our natural inclination when we sin. And we're in the wrong. It has to be somebody else's fault. It's because our mama did this, or our mama taught me this, or because this person. If he, man, I wouldn't have ever punched him in the mouth if he hadn't said that that way. Right, that way. It yeah. is always somebody else's fault. That's right. While we fall short, but we could just receive the blood, man. We talk about that in class for the night. What was that scripture you're gonna read again? Oh, Romans uh, three twenty four. Twenty four through. Uh, you know, you know those clips on a bumper that when you, when you pump the bumper, it clips in? Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like that sometimes that's what we have inside of us. Like, whenever our shortcomings fall, it just holds on to it. Like, we should, we should break that clip, you know? Yeah. So break it just falls out. Break that chain. Yeah. Amen. All right, so, uh, the grace of God. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that came with Christ Jesus. None of us are perfect, you know what I mean? Like uh, we all, like we said, we all fall short every day. But the one thing that's, that's that's great about you know having these different types of grace, these these great grace of forgiveness and uh, acceptance, and you know being able to come to Him daily and uh, you know talk with God about these these shortcomings and know that you know that same grace that we were given today will be renewed tomorrow morning. Amen. And we don't have to, you know, live with the shame and, and guilt, you know, that something we did last week, last year, right. you know, there's been many times that I just go sideways, you know, sour stuff, and, you know, I might not show that it's, that it's eating at me, but even in my mess, you know, I didn't like, you know, I wasn't I would about doing folks wrong. You know, it's just something would, and I look back on it, you know, today, and I know that, that, that God has been calling me for a while, you know. And I just kept, no, nah, I got a little bit more in me. I got a little bit more in me. But, man, it's so much it's so much easier to live daily not having to look over your shoulder, not having to, to worry about, you know, how you did this person wrong or, or to live in grace is, is priceless, man. Like, well, even, like you said the other day, you said you yeah. couldn't remember you couldn't remember a time where you laid in the bed at night you lay in bed at night now though, don't you? oh yeah oh yeah amen yeah. sleep like a baby sleep like, like a baby, baby. hear you down the hallway <laughs> hear you all the way down the yeah. hallway <laughs> <laughs> that's right yeah. but uh you know I'm so thankful man I'm a I'm a prime example of of, of the grace that God can give that's to right. somebody I just want everybody to know that. Like, and I try to live my life daily to show thankfulness for grace and show the love of Christ. That's right. Daily. That's all I got.
yesterday afternoon they were in my office this morning uh -oh. so I'm going to each week when we do this I'm going to create a binder with each lesson in it and we're moving in a direction and I really believe it's going to be for you guys that's awesome so when y'all move on and, and I'm going to give as I give the assignments out I believe we got Eric next Friday yes we do and um, as we give these assignments out I'm going to give y'all a tool and that's all it is it's a tool and you're going to be able to put it in your tool belt Amen. So when you move down the road and you start, people start asking you to share your testimony or teach or whatever at your church, you'll have a little something you can go back and look at. Thank you. You know, this week, last week was eternal life. You know, Pat did a great job and salvation by grace this week. Just very basic foundational teachings. And you have something in your tool belt. Amen. 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 We want you guys, you know, me and Bobby were talking yesterday. It's all, it's all about bearing fruit. You know, and Jesus said that we should bear fruit, much fruit, and fruit that remains. So we want to, we want this to have a generational impact. Something you can pass on to your son and your, and your grandchildren and, That's you know, right. great-grandchildren. That's and right. Not just in the natural, but in the spirit. Amen. 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 Um, just a couple things real quick. That was a, a hard message to come behind. It was a really good message. I'm not trying to preach behind. My brother did a great job. Great job, man. Really good job. Yeah, he um, did. Ephesians 2. Really quick. And man, he said it well. So many different types of grace. Ephesians 2. And... All right. Let's start with verse one. Come on with it. Josh, are you reading or are you on something else? Oh, Josh, on something else. Let's go. Yeah, I'm on something else. Man. Right. You good? <laughs> Ephesians two. And you, he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. In once, and this kind of sounds like Clint's message, what he was talking about. In which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath just as others. There's, there's a cool little piece hidden in that. You know, we talk about spirit, soul, and body a lot. First Thessalonians 5.23 says, May your whole spirit and your soul and your body be preserved blameless. In the word testament, a deeper meaning, a root meaning of the word testament means to arrange. And oftentimes in God's word, his word is arranged to reveal his heart or reveal a situation. And, and here we see in verse 3, we conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh. See, the divine order of heaven is spirit, soul, and then body. Right? And here we see flesh is, flesh is first. And then it says the mind, that's the soul, and then nature. So it, in our old life, we were, our lives were out of order. Amen? Amen? We were led according to the flesh. And now we're learning how to be spirit-led. The sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. All right, let's keep going. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love, which he, which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ by grace. Here we go. By grace you've been saved, and he has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you've been saved through faith. 
Grace is God's part and faith is our part. Amen? Amen. Faith is laying hold to what grace has already done. Faith is laying hold to grace. Grace is what God has already done. Faith is our part. Grace is God's part. And not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. And that's the huge key. You know, all our boasting has to be in who? God. In Christ. Jesus. Yeah. Amen? Amen? It says he's made us the right. Second Corinthians 5.21 says he has made us the righteousness of God in Christ. Not because we ever committed acts of righteousness. Not because we filled out all the, checked all the boxes and jumped through all the hoops. It was all by faith. That's right. And that takes all the pressure off of us. Amen? Amen. And that takes all the focus off of us. And we can redirect it to him, to God. And say, look, I was, a, I was a wreck. You heard Clint this morning. I think that's all of our testimonies. You know, the scripture that he quoted from Romans 3.23, where it says all of sin, it's talking about every single person that was born into this earth, whether you're Jew, Gentile, whatever. We were all born into sin. <coughs> and guess what? We all needed a Savior. That's right. Amen? Amen. We were all born into sin. And thank God for His grace. We can't boast. Um... Let's turn back to Romans 5 really quick. I know we're about out of time. Romans 5. Hey, real quick before I forget, as we turn it back, Brother Art's coming down from Nashville. He'll be at home church tonight if y'all want to come out and show him some support. Me and Art did time together. He'll probably share a little bit of his testimony tonight. He's got a crazy testimony. Crazy testimony, but it's just cool seeing where God has brought him from and where he's taking him to. He won't ever say anything, but his son just signed with the New England Patriots. He plays in the NFL. He don't ever talk about it. But he was, uh, when he played uh, high school football for some of you sports fans, he was Mr. Tennessee. His son was. He's broke all kind of crazy records. He played at UT in uh, Knoxville. So he was an uh, awesome football player. Anyway, he ended up going to Baylor, and then he got third-round draft pick to the San Francisco 49ers. And now he just signed with the Patriots. So he don't ever talk about stuff like that. But he's got a lot of little cool things like that for you sports fans. You might want to ask him some stuff about that when you see him tonight at home church. But I want to encourage y'all to come out and just show him support. He's been showing mad support to this ministry since day one. Involved in the conferences. He's a partner. He's just a great man of God and a great friend. So I want to encourage y'all. I know a lot of the guys at the house are coming out. But anybody else that's here or watching, I want to encourage y'all to come out tonight and show him some support. Amen. Amen. All right. Does somebody have something? I feel like somebody Kevin, raised their hand. Kevin raised his hand. Oh, I, was just, I was wondering if uh, the outside, like, somebody told you was allowed to go to the home church. Talk to Pat. He's the enforcer. He's the home church enforcer. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Here we go. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Let's do this real quick because we only got a couple minutes. Um, Romans 1. I want to close with this. I was going to go somewhere else, but. Make it your mind, Mr. Chris. I know, right? I didn't want Josh to give me that look when I. You know what time it is. I mean, you know. It's that time, yeah. You know what time it is. I mean. Romans 1.16. Y'all ready? Mm -hmm. yes, sir. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. That's right. mm. For it is the power of God and salvation for everyone that believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Now, I want y'all to get this, the I'm not ashamed part. You know, because in our own life, when we would sin, we had so much shame that we would run from God. And sometimes we still try to bring that into our new life. But getting this revelation today is saved by grace. Righteous by faith. That gives me the confidence, the confidence, the boldness to run to God. 
if we miss the mark. Not when, right, Pat? That's right. If we miss the mark. If we miss it. We're trying to go to another level with our sun consciousness. If we miss the mark, it says we can come boldly. Now watch this. I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for in it lies the power of God and the salvation. The word salvation, guys, is not just going to heaven. It's part of it. But that's in the future. But right now, the word salvation is the word sozo. And it means healed, delivered, whole, safe, sound, and prosperous. So, pay attention. Not being ashamed and having that testimony. Righteousness by faith. It says in Ephesians 4 that we've been made after God in righteousness and holiness. So, when we sin, we have that. We can have that boldness. It says in 1 John 4 that on the day of judgment, we can have that boldness. That could be every day. We have a boldness where we can not run from God, but run to God. But when we get developed in sun consciousness, when we get developed in the finished works of the cross, and that guilt, shame, and condemnation is broke off, and now we have that confidence as a son to run to him, there's healing in that. I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for in it is the power of God unto healing, wholeness, deliverance, Preservation, safety, soundness, restoration, not having that shame. I'm not ashamed. Gives us that confidence to come and receive all the things that Jesus paid for with his precious blood. Some of us have been looking for healing in certain areas that we haven't received. Some of us have been looking to be delivered in certain areas. Some of us have been looking for wholeness. And I present to you today, if you can just get a hold of this salvation by grace, just get a hold of it. Just wrap your mind around the depths of the finished works of the cross. And you can receive that healing. You can receive that restoration. You can receive that wholeness, preservation, soundness. And whatever that area of your life is, just simply by receiving this message, saved by grace through faith. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's get ready to close out. Let's stand up. Any questions or comments in closing? I don't want anybody to get with me afterwards if you have any questions. Is there anybody in here today that something something clicked as Clint was sharing his message or any of the verses that went? Well, not book clicked there. Amen. <laughs> Anybody need healing in their body? Just raise your hand if you do. Raise your hand. All right. Johnny. Josiah. Mike. Mike. All right. Look. Let's do this. Whoever, whoever raised their hand, whoever's standing next to them, you're the ministry team. Just put your hands on them. Brother Donnie. Somebody. I don't even want you guys to ask. I just want you to say. Just say, say this, guys. Say, be healed. Be healed. In Jesus' name. All pain leaves the body. All pain. Now let's give God thanks. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just thank you for healing. And thank you for the men today, Lord, that have received this message, salvation by grace. And we are not ashamed of your gospel. For in it is the power of God and to salvation. And we just speak healing over our brothers today. And we come into agreement. And by faith we call it done. And we give you thanks. And I thank you for every man under the sound of my voice. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing in their lives. Lord, I thank you for the men that's getting up every Friday and sharing your word. I pray that you will continue to increase them, Lord, as they step out, Lord. You, the word says you take us from glory to glory. That as the men come up week after week, that there will be uh, confidence not in themselves but in you. And I thank you, Lord, for just a new boldness rising up in each man's heart and each man's life as we step out today, Lord. Let us not be ashamed of your gospel. 
as we go out to the different job sites and restaurants for lunch or, or wherever we might be. And even tonight, this evening at home church, Lord, that we would be not just be hearers of your word, but we'd be doers of your word. And everything that we freely receive, Lord, that we would freely give. And I thank you for divine opportunities as we go out today, Lord, that we would be able to step out, Lord, and, and, and share your gospel or share our testimony or share whatever word you put on our heart, Lord. And I just thank you in advance right now that your word that goes forth from our mouths will not return unto you void, but it will accomplish everything that you sent out to do, Lord. Lord, we love you. We bless you. We honor you. I thank you for sending out your angels, Lord, around every truck, every crew, Lord, that you would just keep us safe and sound and protect us as we go out on the highways and byways today, Lord. And we just thank you for all that you paid for with your blood. We thank you for your grace and your salvation. And we receive it by faith today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Jesus! Jesus! <laughs> Can I get one minute, one second? Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 Y